Give me something. If I'm a Texans fan, and I really don't know any Texans fans, but if I'm a Texans fan, no, I'm not saying there aren't any. I just don't know them. Give me something <laughs> to feel good about coming out of last night's game other than the final score. The health of your team. Seeing Nico Collins back out there. Yes, Larmy Tunsil gets another penalty. I think he's up to 15 or 16 penalties for the season. Has to fix that. But you come out on your opening drive, you get a guy coming off a hamstring injury, and you throw a screen pass, a, a, a no gain or a, a, a minus negative uh, pass play to Nico Collins behind the line of scrimmage, and he does this. He takes off, and, and no one can close the distance. Like, they can't catch him. I know all Texas fans are probably sitting there like, oh, don't, don't, no, don't go too fast to your hamstring. But he's back. I think you're going to look, and hopefully Will Anderson Jr. comes back. You get Lasseter back at corner. I think that's what you should be banking on, the health of your football team, because it hasn't all looked great for them, but – it looks a lot different when that defense has Lassiter in there at corner, Will Anderson Jr. in there, and now you're playing ball. Yes, you saw Donnell Hunter, the reason you brought him there, how productive he was last night. Now, once you get Will Anderson Jr. back out there at full strength, even without Stephon Diggs, I think it still gives you a team that is a very good team from last year, but insert the guy who's been your bell cow this year, Joe Mixon. And Bengals fans... You think maybe you wanted to continue to pay Joe Mixon for what he's doing in Houston, career highs and carries and yards and all those things. Like, he looks phenomenal in Houston, another three-touchdown game. So, to me, if I'm a Houston Texans fan, yes, C.J. Stroud's incredible. But the way you win playoff games, being able to run the football and play good defense. When you get those guys back out there on defense and you still have Joe Mixon running this ball, you might be able to unlock a different C.J. Stroud in the playoffs because teams won't be able to just tee off and pressure and do all those things because they're going to worry about st having to stop number 28, Joe Mixon, in the playoffs. So, Texans fans, there's a sense of urgency you need right now. There's no doubt about it, but I don't think there's a reason to panic. D'Amico Ryans, Bobby Slowick, these guys have shown you over the last year and, and change, year and a half or more, that they're good coaches. Let them do what they're doing. Nick Casera has brought in some key pieces that I think will help this team continue to go forward. But I think this team has a shot. They just need to secure some things. And most importantly, the health of your football team is the most important thing. And hopefully they can get some of these guys healthy and they can stay in the lineup and not come in, play a week or two, and then go out, just stay in and finish the season strong. On the issue of health, it makes me wonder if that's the reason why they don't use Mixon even more than they – they do. Against the Jets, I thought they really should have used him more. He would have had 200 rushing yards that night. They got away from it. And they were trying to throw the ball into the teeth of the Jets defense instead of just using what was working. Mixon was wanting great that night. He didn't run as well against the Lions, but he was awesome last night as well. They ultimately didn't need him to go out and have a huge game. He had those two runs early, but they need him to be healthy come postseason. And you fired another stray that really wasn't a stray at the Bengals. I made this point last night on Twitter. We have all this talk about the Giants blowing it with Saquon Barkley and letting him leave. The Bengals were going to cut Joe Mixon. They ultimately traded into the Texans. That should have been the clue to the Bengals. They're getting ready to cut this guy and dump his salary. And the Texans are like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. You're, whoa, whoa, no, 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 don't cut him. Don't cut him. We'll trade for him. And they gave him a new contract for crying out loud. And... And the pushback I got from Bengals fans was, our offense is good. Our offense isn't the problem. If you had that presence of Joe Mixon, your offense is even better. And I don't want to fire a straight at Chase Brown or a direct shot, as the case may be. He's the guy who fumbled when you're up 21-7 in the third quarter and in full control of the game against the Ravens, and everything turned after that. Not that fumbles don't happen, but Joe Mixon is a higher level, and he still has it. They made the same assessment Similar assessment to what the Giants made. We can find somebody else who can do what this guy does. And I think with Mixon, it was also part of he's he's in year eight. Let's go with someone younger. Yep. And they 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 misplayed it. They'd be they would not be four and seven right now if they still had Joe Mixon in Cincinnati. And I agree with you. I think the Cincinnati move is worse because 
the Giants don't have a championship caliber team. If I'm the Cincinnati Bengals, might we hold on to Joe Mixon an extra year or two? Maybe. But, like, if that results in winning a Super Bowl because you have a quarterback who's arguably the best quarterback in the league, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and he's shown that even though the team isn't good right now, every week we get to watch Joe Burrow, we walk away like, damn, that, guy, that, that guy's good. Like, look what he, he gets. And you talk about, well, it's not our offense. How about you would possess the ball more? You could run the ball more. You can do different things. And Chase Brown is a good player. I just think you would have Joe Mixon, and now Chase Brown would be essentially what you brought him in to be, change of pace, explosive play guy, put him in there on third down, different things like that. You would be able to do those things with Chase Brown but you, you let go. I don't, I don't understand teams when you have a team, they were just in the Super Bowl, you come back, you, now everybody's healthy, you're going to go do it, and you say, let's get rid of a really good player because we're paying him a little bit too much and we think he's older. So, like, look what the Rams did. Like, the Rams will never regret going all in, trading draft picks, paying guys. They won the Super Bowl. Like, they won't regret that. And they're still rebounding. They're figuring some things out. They're still a relevant, good football team. But, like, I, I never understand the teams who look at their balance sheet more and more instead of looking at the product on the field and saying, hey, we possibly could go win a Super Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs offense isn't good, but they possess the ball. They can run the ball. They can do different things. It hasn't worked out for them for one game this year that they lost in Buffalo. Other than that, they've found a way because they have a good quarterback. They understand the run game. The Bengals have that, but it's all high flying. Yes, they can score points in a hurry, but it also puts your defense back on the field, which you don't like right now in Cincinnati. So I just don't understand. I look at that Bengals team and like they should be a team that we're talking about. But instead, they trade Joe Mixon. And now we're talking about the Houston Texans being a team that can get going, maybe rally and make a push in the playoffs. And we're talking about the Bengals. Maybe they get in, maybe they don't. It's, it's still an uphill battle for them, which to me just makes no sense. Poorly managed roster is resulting in what the Bengals look like right now. You made a great comment about obsessing with balance sheets more than an opportunity to get to a Super Bowl and win it. This is my assessment after 23 years of doing this, I don't think Mike Brown even prioritizes or cares about or views as a good thing going to a Super Bowl because you know what? It costs you more money. How much more money do we make by going to the Super Bowl? Do we really make much more money? We have to spend more money. We got to take all those people for another game. Yeah, we get more money, but do we really make money? What's our profit? What's the difference between, at the end of the day, how much more money there is that came in versus what we put out? In a normal year, in a playoff year, one and done, in a deep playoff run, a Super Bowl appearance, I think at the end of the day, it's not any more profitable. It may be less profitable. So all the more reason to obsess over the balance sheets because why are we going to prioritize the thing that's going to cost us more money anyway? Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.